your spirit becomes so full of his love, you'll be carried into depth unknown. And suddenly the next thing you read is, he will draw, he'll draw you. But, but who's crying for the Lord to draw her in? Is the bride. So you experience this depth and suddenly everything in you cries out, please bring me closer. Because what you're experiencing is so incredible, so heavenly so indescribable glory you want more because the deeper you go the deeper you want to go you start crying out draw me i'm not satisfied with just this level of depth i want deeper depth because you are deeper than this he is called the unsearchable christ say he's unsearchable now Precious people, some people say, now wait a minute, this kind of relationship belongs in heaven. Oh no, it starts right here and continues in heaven. That's why heaven be becomes, becomes uh, why do you think the bride says, come Lord Jesus? Who's crying, come, the Holy Ghost and the, and the bride? Is that right? Why? Because she's experienced this depth. And she wants more of it, so she cries, come please. I want more of this, come please. The spirit and the bride say, come. Because she's experiencing this depth of love, this depth, this incredible oneness with him, that she wants to be one with him forever. So she's crying, come. And then she, so she's making this request, draw me. She's so overwhelmed by his love that she's crying, draw me. Why? That I may go deeper. Uh, let, me, let me be guided by your fragrance. Because earlier she talked about his fragrance. She said, she said uh, uh, in, 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 in verse 3, she said, because your fragrance uh, is good ointment and your name heals my being and now please draw me deeper into that fragrance bring me deeper into your self guide me into yourself but where does he guide you he guides you into his chambers because she's asking him to draw her she said draw me i'm gonna run she said you draw me and i'm coming running the true bride says to christ I love you so much, just please, I beg you, pull me in, pull me in, and I won't walk, I'll run towards you. And when I run towards you, bring me into your chambers. Because in those chambers, I will experience unspeakable joy. Now, in that chamber, what happens? In that chamber, he reveals his face. In his chambers, he rewards you by revealing his face because now you begin to prefer him above all. That's why she says to him in verse 4, Draw me, we'll run after you. The king hath brought me into his chambers. We will be glad and rejoice. I'm going to experience such joy in you. And I'm going to remember your love more than I remember wine. And the upright love thee. Therefore, only the righteous, only the bride can walk in there. But watch what happens the second she's in those chambers. Something happens to her. This happens to every believer who goes into this depth. Are you ready for it? Yes. The second she's in there, she cries out, verse 5, I am black, but calmly. O oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem, as the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Wow, this is awesome. The bride is in the presence of Jesus and he is so, his light is so penetrating that the only thing she sees is her darkness. She feels unworthy to be there. So she says, Lord, your light is so bright 
your glory is so great that I have just seen my darkness. The, the Hebrew word for I am black is I am dark. Dark because of sin. The opposite of light is dark. I am dark because of sin. Your light is so bright. All I see is my flaws. My weakness. But, even though I see my flaws, I am in a place that is calmly. I am, I am in a place where it's still lovely. Because I am experiencing in my inner heart such joy and such love and such beauty. I've been captured by the Lord. Yet, Lord, it is lovely even though I can see my sin. That's what happened to Isaiah. He saw the glory of God and he said, I'm undone. But yet he was immersed in that glory. Are you still there? Yes. But then he says this, she says this. And this is awesome. As the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. The curtains of Solomon speak of your humanity, which conceals the beauty inside your spirit. So within your spirit is heaven. Within your spirit, there's Jesus. Within your spirit, this world unknown is happening. Within your spirit, you're experiencing such depth because this is where the oneness is. But now, suddenly, because of the brightness that's there, you see your flaws, you see your flesh, you see your, your humanity. I've been to that place where the glory of God so shone around me that the first thing I saw was my humanity. And I said, who am I to be here? Who, what gives me the right to be here? Just like Peter, when he, when, when he was faced with the glory, he said, I'm a sinner, depart from me. Remember that? So you feel unworthy being even in there. Yet it is lovely because he has allowed you in there. The glory of God has shone while your curtain is still on. The curtain of Solomon, your humanity is still there. And that's what it means. Are you learning anything? Yes. But look what it says in verse 6. Look not upon me. The bride is still speaking. Look not upon me because I am black. Because the sun hath looked upon me. My mother's children were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards. But mine own vineyards have I not kept. Dear God, this is magnificent. Lord, give the people a heart that can understand this. Lift your hands and ask them to help you understand what I just read. And I'm going to explain it to you. Father, give them that heart to understand. Lord, they are deep enough. Many of them have been in this class so long. It's time for them to understand all this. And God's people said, Amen.